So if you haven't seen The Creator, it's a pretty decent sci-fi film, uh, and ILM did the special effects for it. Now, one of the things I love about ILM, Industrial Lights and Magic, is the fact that they put out a ton of documentaries on their YouTube channel, and they just put up this one inside ILM, the making of The Creator. So I want to go through this with everybody this morning and do a reaction video to it, because I think there's some really cool stuff in here. I like to watch things around VFX um, and storytelling and filmmaking in general, just lots of documentaries around this process because it's one of the things that I wouldn't mind working on eventually. And so I just, I always like to study the things I like to learn. And I've done, been blessed to do a lot of things in my life. This might be one thing I tackle one day. But in the meantime, I can watch really cool videos and say, this is awesome. How did they make it? So we're going to go watch this together. Um, if you're not already following ILM, I mean, obviously they've been around forever, um, starting with Star Wars. Um, I've followed them over the years and and I just remember loving like when they were doing work on things like um, Scorpion King you know and and they've just they've done a ton of really good projects over the years so let's go ahead and watch this one on um, on the creator here go ahead and move that out of the way but well, ILM is just like this powerhouse of breakthroughs in the history of cinema and every time they've done something significant, the filmmaker came in and said, I don't care how hard this is. I don't, it, the technology shouldn't lead this. This is what we need to do. Can we figure out a way to do it? That's an interesting point. Um, being willing to come up with really creative solutions. And more importantly is like, you know, they have, they have budgets, you know, they're obviously given a budget to work with. But um, it's trying to figure out how you can do what you need to do within that budget. It, that takes talent. Like, if we can't do it digitally, we'll do it, you know, as an effect, you know, as a physical thing. And, and how do we do that? Well, we can build miniatures. We can do matte paintings. Like, ILM has done some really crazy stuff over the years to bring creative visions to life. Um, robotics. And and it's there's some really amazing technological feats that have been accomplished by special effects companies overall but ILM has continually led the way I feel like they were the leaders of the industry until Weta came along and then Weta sort of rose up and became I feel like Weta is on par with ILM in terms of the scale and the respect that they have for the films they work on and just a really good pedigree in science fiction and fantasy um, anyway let's get back to this My name is Gareth Edwards and I am the director of The Creator. I love the overall cinematography and everything was great. I really wanted to start with this idea that if we find amazing locations, the science fiction elements will grow out of them. And that was very exciting. Hi, I'm Jay Cooper. I'm the visual effects supervisor on The Creator. It was a really ambitious idea. I was super keen to do this film differently. There's so much heart to it. We Look at that to make shot. So this is Ground Zero, Los Angeles. One of the things I loved about the way they shot this was, and, and I don't know that he's, I don't know if it's in, if it's going to have, if he's going to mention it in this documentary. I've seen him mention it in other uh, press and, and interviews around this film. Um, the idea that, you know, if it's going to cost you a quarter of a million dollars to build a set somewhere, um, you know, specific to whatever you're doing. He says, oftentimes on a film of this scale, uh, we can look at a physical location and say, well, we can fly everyone there, put them up in hotels, do all the food and catering and, and transport and everything else, and it's going to be cheaper for us to go there and do it on location than it is to be, a, you know, than to build a set um, on a, you know, case location by location basis. And so um, talking about using natural backdrops and then layering things on top of it to have it look, you know, incredibly realistic. Um, really good films do this, like Pirates of the Caribbean does this. Um, and But also even shows like Game of Thrones, you'll see a lot of that where they've gone and filmed in places like Girona, Spain. And, 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 and they use natural castles and hills and everything else, but then they just layer things on top. So this is really cool when they do stuff like this. Um, and, and I'm really happy to see a, a, a filmmaker who can make these sort of 
lower budget sci-fi films that still look really, really polished. Um, I, I think I'm a big fan. Work, and we wanted to be there to support him, and we were all thrilled to be a part of this. Hi, my name is Catherine Farrar Bluff. I was the visual effects producer at ILM on The Creator. When I first found out about the project, I was nervous, but also really excited because it was so unconventional. I wanted to like reverse engineer the VFX shots. Instead of designing the film first, I really wanted to go around the world and go on the journey these characters go on. What happened is we got some money to go and do a location scout and I sneakily took a camera with me and I didn't tell anyone but the plan was like if we go film these amazing places and like just catch like monks walking amongst like the ruins in Cambodia or people just driving on a moped past us as we travel somewhere like with no tracking data with no markers and just gave it to ILM and said can you turn these into robots it, it, <laughs> I got a I gotta pause for a minute. Do you realize every like everything he just said? This is one of the things I loved about this film. So a lot of times um, they will do compositing. You know, you'll have green screen, right? And and the tracking, like the dots, and you'll have you know because you're doing motion capture and all this stuff. They didn't do that here. What they did was filmed real stuff, real people, and then just did they did it all on top of it. It's so impressive what ILM did with this film. It's so impressive. It became this, this, this puzzle a little bit of not knowing how much we were into any one scene or shot. So this is we were sort of further along in art with James. This the is th that, that took to filming. Hang on. Can I go back further along knowing how much that shot right there? Um, and they're probably going to show this in a minute. That's literally, they went and filmed the actor on location in, in as a normal as he would look normally in this makeup and costume and makeup, and then they took it and digitally did all of this and made him look like a robot. Like, just, it's so, imp it's a reverse way of doing it. It's, it's crazy. We were into any one scene or shot until we were sort of further along in art with James. The approach that Gareth took to filming some of these everyday moments was done in such a way that you don't normally see a high level of visual effects integrated with those characters so cool man and so we feel as though we're an audience like they get there into their heads and put robots on that really like... just added a great amount of um, depth to the film my name's andrew roberts i was on set visual effects supervisor simulants are seen as the most realistic most sophisticated version of artificial intelligence and then from a visual point of view they've taken on characteristics uh, this... of humans it's just amazing first like... thing that gareth asked of us is to try to find forms and we did a lot of design where we experimented with how much of the it's so cool removed. like he really liked the idea of the removing space. he wanted to make it sure that it didn't feel like a makeup gag or it's, it's just you're not constrained so you know what i mean like i'm looking at this and i'm like i i appreciate what he was saying at the beginning of, of he, just, he just handed them something and said can you make this work and this is what they came up with and it's brilliant um it's so crazy to think that this was all done without any sort of like green screen or tracking you know what I mean? Like, that is super impressive. Super impressive. Something that we couldn't do easily on set. The design was complicated, and integrating that into these live action plates with very little data from set, we had a pretty small footprint on location. And oh. so it makes the post process a little more challenging. Yeah. But I think once we were able to come up with a good formula, it worked and it worked really successfully. It did. Many different characters. I, it looked great. So we see characters like Alfie, played by Madeline Boys, and Harun, played by Ken Watanabe. One of the things that I had to do on set was ensure that we could track the movement of their head the um, sliding of their skin in such a way that we'd be able to integrate those robotic elements. Before we got on set, I met with our tracking and layout masters. At so are they still using dots? Hang on. Tracking and layout. Before. In such a way, movement of their head, the um, sliding of their skin. Because I thought they weren't using any in such tracking. a way that we'd be able to integrate. But there's definitely, oh, oh there are those digital markers. Oh, those must be digital markers that he's 
that he's just putting on those robotic elements before we got on I don't set, know. I met with our tracking and layout masters at ILM. And I said, okay, what is the minimum amount of information that you need in order for us to- Okay, so they are using the actual dots. Are and for us to be able to augment these humans. You have on one hand, a very rigid, hard, hard surface of this metal components and hard plastic. In the other hand, you have humans whose faces are almost by definition, uh, elastic so they were still malleable. using some sort of and tracking. So we had to okay, of how to but get those a lot different than the way it's normally done. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. We went to Tokyo and Indonesia and Nepal and everywhere, and we shot these plates, did a little test. James Klein painted these things in just a few hours and then pretty much projected onto simple two and a half D geometry. And they looked amazing. It was like shots that would normally take months to do were happening in a few days. Shooting those varied locations gives it a real rich texture. It makes uh, it feel lived in. Quite like being in the composite. Yeah, this is this. This is the magic of filmmaking. Look at that. Like being Just layers upon image. layers. It's so cool, details man. Details that you really wouldn't be able to to make up or imagine if you were just on a sound stage. The level of integration of the history that's been established. Thinking about if we were 100 years in the future, um, what would objects and vehicles uh, look like? That approach applied to 90. Seven percent of everything we were filming in the movie, but there was this little section in space, and it was like a biosphere where you can see the Earth and the stars, and and there's yet the sun's coming through, but it's nighttime, you know. And so there was so many things about that. It's like we, there's, this doesn't exist. We can't do this. And so then the obvious option was, well, what about stagecraft? I was excited about it. But I was also sort of like, it was so different to what, how we'd been shooting the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. That is kind of this concern that aesthetically, would it marry? Well, yeah, something because... really important to this movie is that it looks like something a little bit from the 1970s. Into well, what he was just talking about is um, when you're using natural, you know, you're using on set, you know, on location shoots with natural lighting, and then you go to a studio space. I liked how he said, can we match the aesthetic? It's like suddenly you're bringing a new, you know, color palette in and there is a look and feel to real trees that the eye knows. And when you see digital trees or you see fake trees, the eye, you, you might not know, but your eye knows and your eye will notice that something's off. And that's when you'll see things and you're like, this must be a, you know, an on, this is a set not a not a location you know what i mean like i think your eye can tell um even if you can't but um it's interesting that he said that though because that's it's it's an aesthetic thing you know are the are the color palettes gonna blend them together or not in terms of the cinematography it's like we have to have these lenses we have to have these cameras and these were like 1970s very characterful uh, vintage anamorphic lenses and they don't lend themselves to being perfectly tracked and but ILM figured it out and we just treated those sets just like they were temples in Cambodia. The visual style is, is, is breathtaking. Production design from James, the phenomenal cinematography from Oren and Greg. Hats off to Jay and the team. They never blinked once. They were like, okay, we understand why you want it to look like this. We'll make it work. You know, the, the success of any project is really not me or or Ian or Andrew or another Sherman, pod shot really man going all the way back to the beginning the <laughs> I've never worked with a director who is so available and engaged in the full visual effects process and that was so rewarding to our whole crew everybody was just in love with the subject matter in love with the design and really enjoyed the process so for me it was just sort of a once in a lifetime experience cool stuff man I 
I do like good VFX when it's done right, man. ILM. Cool stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, everybody, so uh, you never miss an update. I do things like this once in a while. I like to watch videos and do reactions, VFX, film stuff, my, my film reviews, TV show reviews. See you in the next ones. Don't forget to uh, check this out if you haven't already. The movie itself, I've got a review up here on the channel. Um, it uh, wasn't a bad film. Uh, wasn't a great film. It was a it was a decent like middling sci-fi affair. Definitely, in my opinion, worth watching. It wasn't anything to write home about, but uh, the VFX were done in a very good manner. Um, the overall experience was pleasant. I'm not complaining at all. Um, ILM does good work. Check it out. See you guys next one. Peace.